It is your 18th birthday and one of your parents must die. Hello, welcome to Sound and Fury Book Reviews. As usual, I am Tina. Today I am doing a book review of the book The Offset by Calder Sazuzak. I apologize if I said that wrong. This is a dystopian, cli-fi kind of literary fiction that's coming out uh, in September 14th, 2021. And I received this as an e-arc from NetGalley in exchange for a fair review. So thank you to Angry Robot yet again. Uh, I'm auto-approved with them, so that's why I review a lot of their stuff, but also I, I love their stuff, so. <laughs> and this one was no exception. So what is the offset? This is a complex and bleak novel about choice, sacrifice, and societal worth. So what is the book about? So from the blurb, it is your 18th birthday and one of your parents must die. You are the one who decides whom do you pick? In a dying world, the offset ceremony has been introduced to counteract and discourage procreation. It is a rule that is simultaneously accepted, celebrated, and abhorred. But in this world, survival demands sacrifice. So for every birth, there must be a death. So I have to state right off the bat that the offset itself, you know, the concept of a child upon turning 18 being forced to decide which of their parents must be killed to offset the environmental cost of their own life is clearly not meant to be a realistic ver vision of the future, but a vehicle in which to show the drastic state climate change and overpopulation has placed on the world. As such, you know, the political aspects of this concept, like how it came about, are not really discussed, nor are we given a history as to how this measure was put into practice, nor are we told whether this is like just a UK measure because it's set in the UK or worldwide. In truth, something like this would never pass in anything but a totalitarian state. And I don't think, given the way that the world is set up right now, given the UN and things like that, uh, that the other countries would allow like the UK to... to to do this kind of thing. But as a concept, it's fascinating and creates a rich soil in which to make, you know, in which to grow interesting ideas. This is where the kind of literary fiction aspect comes in. The book is designed to make you think more than it is to entertain. And not, that's not to say that books that aren't literary fiction can't make you think, but kind of one of the facets of that genre is that it's, it's almost more like a philosophical exercise than a story. And, you know, that, that's what kind of happens here in some regards. So the book features a very fluid and descriptive prose that reminded me a little bit of Donna Tartt, actually, in that it's elegiac in how it uses the physical world to evoke emotion. There are some really interesting passages about crepit buildings, abandoned places, stuff that I really like, <laughs> that, um, that kind of serves to broaden the tone of the novel in a very specific way. I very much enjoyed, you know, the bleak and harsh tone that pervaded throughout the novel. And I thought the book was also the perfect length. You know, it's a little, sh it's short, but any longer and it would have been very depressing. And it also would not have worked as a novella. So I thought that it was a nice short little novel that is very, very bleak. <laughs> One thing I'm rather torn about is the characters. So I understood them while not entirely liking them. You know, Miri is a teenager burdened with a huge and terrible responsibility. She runs away from home, not only because of the kind of preemptive guilt that she must be suffering, but also because her parents are always working and one of them is very cold and demanding. So of course she doesn't have a very happy home life. While her parents aren't abusive and probably not, ten not really neglectful, she doesn't have a lot of support there. At least that's what I got out of it. And then you have Jack, her mother, one of her mothers, who is burdened with guilt over not spending enough time with her daughter, as much as, you know, being driven by a higher purpose to save her daughter and the entire world because she is part of an, an important project that is trying to basically save the planet. Despite these things, though, I didn't really feel like I got to know either of them as much as we could have, like, especially for it being an entire novel. You know, Miri's years of homelessness are mentioned more in passing than explained in depth, and we don't really get her as much as we could have. I mean, I understood kind of where she was coming from, but I think a lot of other readers, I glanced at a few other reviews, didn't really understand why she would have left home. I mean, I, I completely understood, but, you know, that might be something that required a bit more depth, I guess. 
Jack herself was quite easy to understand, but you also don't like her very much because of how kind of cold and obsessed she is with her work. But then again, like, if she manages to save the entire planet, is is it justified that she's kind of neglected her child? That's kind of one of the ideas of the novel is like the idea of sacrifice and the idea of of social worth, things like that. Like, uh, this is something that the book, I think, tries to get you to think about. We also don't learn a lot about Alex, which is Miri's other mother. Um, we know about her profession and we know that she's kind of like the nicer one. But, you know, we don't really know much about her other than that as well. She doesn't really get a perspective. The book is told in Miri and Jack's kind of third person following them. So we don't get a lot about Alex. Then again, though, if we'd loved the characters, like if we'd fallen in love with them, the story would have been very hard to read, like almost too dark, almost too um, <laughs> depressing in a way. So it's kind of nice that we had a kind of distance from the characters. The novel doesn't feature that much of a plot, you know, aside from a moment of intrigue. Uh, a great deal of the novel features rather everyday life and flashbacks. There's a lot of focus on kind of scientific, technical terminology and descriptions of experiments and things like that which I thought were interesting the no novel takes place over a course of only a couple days that being said I was very enthralled and I never once stopped wondering about what the ending would be it's very very interesting <laughs> speaking of the ending I'm not going to say what the ending is in my mind it could have gone one of three ways I think you could posture other ways as well but in my mind it was kind of leaning towards these three things and I was leaning far more towards the one that actually happened I, that doesn't mean I think it was too predictable. In fact, I was hoping I was wrong. And so I think that the novel ended in a way that that exemplified the themes that the book was trying to convey. Overall, uh, <laughs> this is not a happy story where we save the Earth in the end. <laughs> this is a warning to stop screwing around with the planet. It reminded me very much of a book I read, I reviewed earlier in the year called The Diary in the Age of Water. And it reminded me a lot of Jeff Vandermeer's work as well, although not so kind of cryptic and uh, symbolic as, as he tends to write about. I guess just because it is kind of a, a cli-fi book. And I want to get into one little thing. So this might just be my interpretation, but I read some real parallels into reproductive justice concerns in this novel, particularly due to the scenes where women are harassed and abused outside of clinics by mobs for the reproductive choices, rallies against antinatalists, a word which seemed very close to anti-choice to me, <laughs> and how the reproviolence, which is violence against people that reproduce, um, disproportionately affects women, yet the antinatalists don't seem to care about that aspect of it, of course. This to me seemed to very much parallel uh, how women are treated in terms of bodily autonomy. But anyway, I thought, I don't know if this was an intention, but it just seemed to me like it kind of, there was some parallels there that I thought were very interesting. So anyway, I gave this book four stars. I recommend it to people who like their books grim, readers of cli-fi, and people who enjoyed 1984 because it definitely has some resonances to that. Anyway, this is really good. It was really good. Thank you again to Angry Robot uh, for the e-arc and for fixing my problems with obtaining the e-arc because I'm silly. Uh, and yeah, and I think uh, anyway, everyone should check out this book because it's, it's really interesting and very, very fascinating topic. So thank you.